bending. And um, let's talk about what that means. Pitch bending is where I can manipulate the tonal center, the actual note that you're hearing of an instrument when it's being played by bending the pitch around. Usually it's by sliding from a lower pitch up to a higher pitch, up to the actual pitch. For example, if I have a music that uh, uh, calls for an, a G note with a trombone, I can manipulate that pitch down lower. So people refer to it as glide or slide or glissando or a number of terms. And probably the most accurate is pitch bending, where we're actually bending that pitch of a G down below. But we don't do that when we're actively playing it. We'll actually start with the lower note and pull up to the G. And there are devices on instruments that will allow you to do that. Uh, let me tell you what they are so you can determine what's on your instrument. Right in front of me here, I'm using a joystick, which is basically um, just like a video game. It's a, it's a stick that comes up, and we can move it left and right. And when you move it to the left, the pitch will, that you're playing will go down. When you move it to the right, and the pitch that you're playing will go up. Here's the G again. I can go up on the right. You can probably barely see it on the edge of your screen. Push it to the left, and it goes down. Uh, most instruments, keyboards at least, uh, and synthesizers will have the option for you to plug in a foot switch, which will allow you to do that with your foot so you don't have to use, uh, take up a hand over here. Some instruments even have uh, a light sensor that's located on the instrument somewhere, and you can place your hand uh, closer or farther from that light sensor, which will bend that note. Uh, some instruments have, uh, uh, I know Kurzweil, for example, on some of their instruments has a, a little, um, like a sphere, like a small sphere, maybe the size of a golf ball or a little bit bigger. And it's, it works just like the joystick. You move it from left to right. It's just probably a little easier on your hands, which is kind of nice. But so the, the next thing to determine is when do we use it and why do we use pitch bend? Um, well, number one, it is characteristic of the way that some instruments play some real life instruments. And obviously we're directing this video uh, at people who are playing instruments that reproduce those other instruments. So if I am going to play, for example, a guitar sound, I've got a reproduction of a guitar. So I'm reproducing those glides with the foot switch uh, to make that guitar sound more realistic. Anytime you're, you're imitating another instrument on an electronic reproducer such as a keyboard, uh, it, it pays to play that instrument authentically as it would be played if there were a real, in this case, a guitar here. Um, it's even country music has that pedal steel. <laughs> Hear that that one. I'm playing two notes. One of those notes will glide down. So then, when I put it with a, a nice country background, there's also a, a, a whole era of music that used uh, the joystick on a synthesizer to create. Um, synthesized sounds uh, that don't, are not really reproducing in other instruments. And that was pop and rock music mostly. Um, and, and it was really imitating the sound of the electric guitar. So you have this kind of a thing. up and down. I have some commandments that I have written here about pitch bending because pitch bend is a feature that if used well can really enhance the authenticity of your music 
if you use poorly, it can really sound terrible, to be honest with you. So here's the first commandment of pitch bend. No matter where you start or what you do, uh, be sure that the pitch that you are bending uh, ends up at the intended pitch before the note disappears, either before you stop playing or before the note decays. Um, if you don't do that, if I'm playing along, for example, let's go back to that trombone for a minute. Um, um, I'm going to play an old big band classic tune. Now here, right there, the note is C, but I'm gliding into it from the B flat by pressing my foot switch. If I don't make it back to that C that I intended to play before the note is over, it's going to land uh, on a, a note other than C, and it's going to sound like I just missed a note. Uh, it just throws everything off. So you need to be sure that your visit with the glide, whether it's done with the joystick or the the sphere at the end or the light, pitch, the light pitch bend or your foot, that you do it and get off of it quickly so the note can return to the correct note. So first thing that we'll notice is that most pitch bend effects involve bending the intended pitch up to the correct tone from a slightly lower tone. So if I'm going to play something on a guitar and, and my intended note is C, what it will be most of the time is will come up to the C from a lower note. Now I'm not moving my fingers, so that's happening with this switch over here to my left. It's important to remember that in order for us to only hear the note come up, you'll have to activate the pitch bend before you strike the note. Because if you've already played the note, you'll hear it go down. I don't want the listener to hear the da. I want them to hear the. Okay, so um, it takes some work to do that. So that third commandment is to start low and apply that mechanism, that pitch bending mechanism, before you play the note. You should only hear the note come up. Uh, you've got to learn to time that pitch bend effect based on the amount of time the note lasts. Uh, if you're playing a song that, uh, that you want to put a pitch bend on a certain note and that note is very rapid, it comes and goes quickly, there might not be time to do that. So I suggest that we take a look at three properties of deciding where we want to do pitch bend. Number one, uh, how long is the designated note that we're bending the pitch of? Number two, the tempo of the piece, because even a longer note can be over more quickly if the tempo overall is fast. And the third thing uh, is the decay factor of the instrument that you're reproducing. Now, what do I mean by decay factor? Well, decay simply means the natural tendency of a sound to end even if I leave my finger on the note. For example, if I go to a, a piano, if I'm going to play a piano sound and I strike a note, now I can hold that down as long as I want to, but it's going to eventually fade out. Because on a real piano, a hammer hits a string, that string will vibrate and produce a certain sound, but that vibration will slowly uh, diminish until there's no vibrating and the string is still again. So that, that effect uh, called decay is reproduced on the instrument that you're playing. Fourth commandment of pitch bend. Never use the pitch bend effect when reproducing the sound of an instrument that doesn't do it in real life. For example, a piano. There is no way to do pitch bend on a real piano. I mean, you'd have to lay on the strings. So using pitch bend on a piano sounds like one of those old school movies from the 70s. I mean, that's what my grandfather told me anyway. But, uh, it, it, it sounds terrible because it doesn't sound like a piano because pianos never do that. So that's something we, if we want to be authentic, we want to say, you know, uh, we have to stay with that rule. Uh, so that is uh, the fourth commandment of pitch bend. What are those sounds that you shouldn't use? Any pianos, uh, harpsichord, electric piano sound, you know, the old Fender Road sound, the Wurlitzer suitcase piano, uh, no pipe organs, no harpsichord, no Hammond organs, no clavinet. 
um, things like that that you that you've never heard glide on any recording. There's a reason for that, and that's what it is. So let's take a look at the fifth commandment of pitch bending. Pitch bend will exacerbate the inauthenticity of playing multiple pitches with a monophonic voice. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, typically on an on a, we're playing a keyboard instrument. What's happened over the last 30 or 40 years is the quality of the acoustic instrument that we're reproducing electronically has gotten better and better and better. One of the things that, that is presented to, to players is the opportunity to break the rules of how we use notes and use certain sounds on the instrument. Let me explain what I mean by that. Um, many instruments are monophonic. Uh, by monophonic, I simply mean they only play one note at a time. Um, their trumpet, for example, or a trombone, or, or a saxophone, uh, typically those are instruments that only play one note at a time. So if I decide to play several notes at a time, on the instrument using a monophonic instrument, it's not going to be as authentic uh, as we would hope because the that that doesn't happen in real life. If I, if I were to put the, a sound on like a, let's just take a, a, a trumpet while by itself, if I played several notes together, It sounds okay, and it sounds like a few trumpets playing together in that case, but there's a different sound to our ear uh, between one trumpet reproduced several times by an instrument, by us playing more than one note, and the sound of several trumpets playing together. In other words, the sounds were recorded into the sample as a group of trumpets, not a single trumpet. Um, Here's another thing to think about when you're using pitch bend is get to know your particular pitch bending device. Um, like I said, many of the keyboards today uh, and synthesizers allow me to govern how far the device, in this case the stick, will allow me to bend up or down. As I told you, I've got this one set at one whole tone, which is uh, uh, one whole step, which is two half steps down. So if I play a C, it will lower it to a B flat. All right, the sixth commandment of pitch bend. Pitch bend is not effective if the instrument reproduced is playing out of the natural register of that actual instrument. This is especially important if you're combining orchestral sounds or instrumental sounds, and one or more of them is out of the appropriate range for that instrument. Uh, so essentially, listen to the sound of the ensemble that you've created, or even the instrument that you've selected, and be sure you're playing that sound in the range of notes that a real one of those, whatever it is, uh, can play in. So th this is a mistake that a lot of uh, amateur players make. Uh, you know, we can have the most amazing technology in the world uh, created for us and made into a keyboard, uh, but if we uh, play the instrument not in uh, the same style as the instrument that it's reproducing, it's, it's not going to sound good, no matter how good that sample is, um, because we're playing in an area of notes, either high or low, that is not something that the real instrument could do. Let's take the guitar, for example. Now, that's an open strum on a guitar. So I know that I'm kind of in the range of a guitar there. But if, I, if I'm way up here or if I'm way down low, I'm playing in a range that a, it's, it's harder to recognize that as a guitar because it's not in the, in the area where a guitar plays. So it's important to learn range. I'm playing all in the guitar. Now understand that pitch bend sounds most authentic with digital reproduction of solo voices. The more polyphony you add, the more the sound produced will be inauthentic. Harmony, in other words. So the more notes I add together, um, playing harmony. Now that was my single trumpet sound I had a moment ago. The more notes I add, 
um, the more inauthentic it is because of that, well, I call it the perfection causality, meaning that the notes are too in tune and all the vibrato is exactly the same uh, width and so forth and so on. So when you do that with pitch bend, if there's a written pitch bend for a trumpet section, it's too perfect because you've, you've got that polyphony, those multiple notes being played together, and you're gliding them up, and, and with the digital reproduction, it's perfect, and it's too perfect. So it just, it will, it can sound okay, but it's not going to sound uh, realistic as it would uh, otherwise. So seventh commandment of pitch bend is don't overuse it. It's one of those things like uh, a garlic or paprika. Um, you know, you want to use enough to give it the flavor that you want, but, but not to, to where it overruns everything else. Pitch bend on occasional notes adds tremendous, tremendous uh, authentication to the sound, but overdoing it will result in a lack of tonal center. In other words, if I'm bending every note, it, it sounds like a drunk person talking because you don't have enough of the actual tonal center, the actual notes themselves. So if I were going to play uh, When the Saints Go Marching In and I went... That sounds like the birthday parties at 3 o'clock at the morning at the pool hall. Whereas if I just use it sparingly... It's more authentic. So a little bit goes a long way. The eighth commandment of pitch bend, it takes practice to use pitch bend effectively. It also takes listening. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, most of the learning I've done uh, after I got through the, the technical learning part in school, uh, most of the real learning of playing an instrument authentically was done by listening to those instruments play uh, in real life. It's, so pitch bend's a lot of fun. It's, a, it's an awful lot of fun, and it's... Um, something that will add to your playing if you use it the right way. This was a, just a brief overview, or what, maybe not so brief, overview of a pitch bend. wanted to get you started. If you don't have a foot switch to use for pitch bend, uh, you should get one because it really will help you be able to be free to play the music better and do more if you're not having to use a hand for it. And you will get used to using it with your foot despite what you might think. Please stay tuned for lots of specificity on these subjects and a lot more subjects on how to make your playing on a keyboard more realistic. I'm Trip Harrison. This is Piano Simply. Please like and subscribe to this video and leave your, a topic idea. If you have something that you're really struggling with on your instrument, uh, put it down here in the comments below and I'll take a look at it. And if I can work that into a presentation for a video, I will do it. I thank you for being here and I'll talk to you next time.